biggest crossover boxing event ever. Live on the Zone pay per view October 14th. Sign up at DAZN.com. This is Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Bit Al Riley joins me. My man, good to see you, but you need to change that tracksuit top. Hey, are we top of the league still? Are we still top oh, of the moving league? on to the prime card. <laughs> um, quick one. I didn't catch you after your call. Um, so congratulations you, on that fight. Um, I saw you and Nathan in the Sky footage. Bit of respect afterwards. Not that it was kind of too bad blood anyway. Um, but 10 rounds banked and I guess you feel like a better fighter for that. Yeah, you know what? I love a finish. Everyone loves a finish. But the 10 rounds just allowed me to showcase my ability. It allowed me to show my skill. My shit's going to blow it up. <laughs> yeah. It allowed me to show my skill. Um, and just, yeah, different elements of my game. You know, so I'm gassed that I'm English champion. I'm gassed that I can say, you know what, I'm a professional boxing champion, not just a prospect. So yeah, I'm gassed. Would the next one be a defense of that English title? Or? We'll see, we'll see. You know, we're looking at who I can possibly defend it against. There's not many names that are looking illegible. British then? I don't want to be that guy. Well, you know what, it's, always, it's a possibility. I don't think it'll be the next fight though. I'll be honest, I'll be honest. I don't think it'll be the next fight. Um, I think it could be the one after. Uh, but I'd love to defend the English title and maybe if, if not, you might get international or intercontinental or some, something like that, you know. Um, just talking about the prime card and what we've seen up there, what we're going to see in a bit with KSI and Tommy when they come face to face, head to head at the press conference or whatever. Is there an element of missing this whole kind of scene? Because I was saying this to Coogan earlier, it's a bit like coming to the circus. Um, you don't know what you're going to get. It's going to be entertainment. It's a bit hectic, but is there an element of missing the scene a little bit? Uh, you can still miss it and love being a pro. Yeah, I think I I like the entertainment, and you know what I don't. You know why I can't? I don't miss it because I'm still around it. Do you know what I mean? I'm still uh, reacting to it. I don't I don't feel removed from it. I just I'm just not on stage anymore, and I I like the fact I'm not on stage. I've never mi I don't miss being on stage uh, in in that role. I only like to be on stage now doing what I'm doing, but. Yeah, me doing this, like being here, talking to the guys, interviewing the guys, it keeps me a part of the, the, the scene. So, yeah, man, I'm here. I'm good. Where can people see these interviews? Just for a little plug. Is it just, just your YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah so the interviews is Ruin Wills, which is my podcast channel. Me and Leon, my SNC coach, one of my boxing trainers. We've got our own podcast. We do little interviews on the side. Just trying to copy you guys, man. Trying to do it like you, man. You know what I mean? I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, yeah. KSI and Tommy, um, in terms of the magnitude of this event and the eyes it's going to bring, did you ever really believe in influence of boxing would get to this point? Because I feel like this is just obscene. I, mean, I think it's a three billion impression since the fight's been announced. I didn't expect it to continue for this long. I'm not going to lie. I thought maybe after Jake and Gibb, it might die out. I didn't expect it to continue this far and I didn't expect Tommy to get involved in it either. But, I mean, it's the biggest show so far in crossover boxing history because of the undercard as well not just the main it's the fact that there's people that have built reputations now and they built their branding like through fighting because crossover has been around long enough they are on the show so it's definitely the biggest crossover boxing show in history what's the best fight on the undercard obviously take the the top two out Ooh, it's sort of between the, the the big two and the big two fights it's between slim and salt and Dean and Walid, yeah. There's elements of real boxing in, in them two fights as well. Yeah, like they, these, got yeah. Like they, they got, they got skill. Obviously, Slim training with Andre Rosier, which is a legitimate world class trainer. Um, Slim is always, I mean, sorry, Salt has always had great boxing ability as well, and has always looked the most professional. Dean, very good boxing ability. Walid, very good boxing ability. When you watch those fights, you're gonna see an element of skill. Uh, that you're not used to seeing. So that's why I think they're the best ones on the undercard. Yeah, they are wicked fights. Um, on the top two, so KSI and Tommy, how does this fight go? How does KSI win this fight? Does KSI win this fight? I'm nervous. I can't lie, I'm nervous. He's my boy, man. He, like, genuine, my guy. So I know he's thrown himself in the deep end there. He's put himself in a real risky situation, fighting someone way more experienced than him, someone that should beat him. You know, if JJ loses to Tommy, it's not an upset. It's expected, you know? And I just, I just know he's crazy though. I know how crazy he is as well. So I'm like, this belief thing that he has and how hard he pushes himself, man, he can do it. He can do it. He can do it. And uh, I don't think it'll be a points thing. 
if he does it, I think it will be a finish. I don't think he's going to win it on points. I can't see a points win. I think it has to be a KO win. I'm from the boxing background, so maybe I'll take a few pelters for saying this, but I don't know, I'll watch back Jake and Tommy, and Tommy does get caught with overhand rights, and yeah. it's a punch that KSI knows how to throw yeah. and likes to throw. That's what makes it interesting. Tommy, I feel like his confidence is in a completely different place. I think how he felt going into that Jake fight and how he feels going into this fight is completely different. I think he's ready now to be on the biggest stage in terms of publicity for his fights and everything. He's ready now to do that. You think there was a bit of stage fright then in yeah, Saudi Arabia? Yeah, definitely. The first time I think it was a bit of stage fright. You go from, you know, the undercard, you're not on small who shows, but undercard, to then fighting on a big world event, press conferences and that. It probably got to him a little bit. Uh, and I think that affected in the performance. But now, I think he's like, yeah. And JJ's a lot smaller. So it gives him confidence, like, you're a little man. You know, you're not the same size as me. So we're going to see, I think we're going to see one of the best versions of Tommy that we've seen. That's, I do think that, because he's just mentally in the right place. He's confident. He knows he should win. Underestimates JJ's abilities. We're going to see a very confident fight we're going to see the best JJ, surely. Yeah, no, you will definitely see the best JJ. I think he finds it harder to push himself for the Fourniers and uh, um, uh, who else did he fight? Tempar, you know what I mean? So now I feel like this is what he does it for, is to say, yeah, you think I'm going to lose? Watch. And I'm rolling, I'm rocking with my boy always, man. I'm rocking with my boy. I just, I wanted to get this win.